welcome to the Taste of Bipsy. My name is Emily Barmore, and I'm here with Chef Dariel Stevens. Dariel, and we are here making gumbo. So, would you like to explain what ingredients we'll be using for our gumbo today? All right, we're gonna start off with um, the Holy Trinity. Basically, a celery, onion, bell pepper, green bell pepper. Um, I do a sausage, a roux mix, shrimp, crab meat, crab, um, um, crawfish tail, gumbo filet, salt, Tabasco, onion powder, garlic powder, tonis, saturated season, black pepper, flour. Butter. Yum. Now have. what kind of butter is it? It's unsalted butter, butter because I'm adding my own salt to it. Mm -hmm. So it's unsalted. Alrighty, so what will we start off with first? First we're gonna start off, we're gonna start off um, cooking our vegetables and then we're gonna make a roux with the same pan that we cook our vegetables with, okay? Okay. Um, basically, this entire plate will go in there and get cooked. Alrighty. Now, what made you want to become a chef? Well, I started cooking at a young age. And as I began doing it, I got good at it. So I started working on it, perfecting it. My parents also cook. My dad grills. My mom cooks anything she wants in the kitchen. So kind of grew up in, it, in this area. Oh, so you've been in Louisiana all your life? Yes. Was gumbo a very popular dish in y'all's family? It is. Um, it's a Cajun dish, and most of the things we have down here are Cajun. So, basically, we, um, we like spicy soups during the winter, and this, is, this has a good flavor, and it's seafood time. So, during mm -hmm. seafood season, gumbo is the best. Ready. Now, how long do we stir this up for? Um, just enough to get the um, vegetables kind of soft. Maybe a little transparent, which is not going to take long because I already had the pan preheated. And it's just to release some of the flavors and different vegetables and um, maybe get a little crust on the sausage, which also gives it a lot of flavor. At another point in time, if I was home and I, and I was relaxing and I was just taking my time cooking the gumbo, I would actually let this sit here a little bit longer. But it can go in now. Everything is at least heated up. So we can put it in. I also started the um, boiling water with half of the Trinity in it so it can get soft because it's going to cook slower than the ones I heated up and cooked. So to get an even cook, I just started off with the Trinity in the water. And it should cook about the same amount of time now. Alrighty. Save some of my butter because I'm going to need it for the roux. A gravy and roux is basically the same thing except adding cold water. You're going to add hot roux to a hot boiling pot. Okay. All right. Well, now we're going to make the roux. As I'm, when I do my roux, I'm going to add more butter. And it's like it's kind of like making a bechamel if you know what a bechamel is. The only difference is I'm not going to add milk to it. So how much butter would you add to it? Uh, well, unsalted butter, correct? Unsalted butter, I add about four tablespoons. Depends on how much flour you have. I have a cup of flour, so I'm going to need a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about four ta tablespoons of butter. And it's OK that I left some of the um, vegetables in here, because Give it more flavor? It's gonna flavor. It's gonna flavor the roux and it's gonna flavor this pot. Everything is gonna be full of flavor. <laughs> also, when I do, everything has flavor in it. Everything. It's gonna be kind of spicy too. As I'm doing my roux, I'm gonna start adding like the dry ingredients to the roux and to the pot. So everything's gonna get mixed up in the pot eventually anyway. I'm melting the butter as you can tell. I can me I'm melting the butter. It's gonna make it easier for me to um, do the roux. It's gonna be cook also. Lower the fire a little bit because I don't want to burn it or scorch it. Correct. Can you smell it? I can smell it. It smells <laughs> really good. It's just the vegetables. Wait till the seafood gets in there. Mm. It's a totally different smell. Mm. 
And the filet, people use a lot of filet, but filet will take over the entire basket if you put too much in it. So you right. can only use a little. If you use it more than like a tablespoon, probably too much. Because it's, it's strong, it's very strong. Onion powder and garlic powder is strong, but not as strong as that filet. All right, got the butter melted. Next, I'm gonna add the flour. You said it was a cup of flour? This is a cup of flour, but whatever, whatever, however, whatever amount it takes for me to get the consistency that I need is what I don't need. So whatever left, I might not have to use it. This is gonna be like a pasty. You see how it's kind of thickening up right now? Like a paste? Oh yeah, I see it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it together. Once it comes together, I turned the fire down because, like I said, it would burn. See how quick it is picking it up? It would burn if I didn't turn the fire down. Right. You're gonna smell it in a second. It's gonna smell like a little caramel flavor, but it's not. It just let you know that the flour is actually done. Because if you don't cook the flour, you will be able to taste it. Right. In your gumbo, you don't want that. As I add flour, it's continue to stick it, thicken up. It's getting really thick. It's getting really thick. And this is what I want. That's what I want. Take it off the fire because it's kind of high. I mean, it's hot. I can't turn it down anymore, so I take it off the fire and continue to cook it. And you continue to try to get that consistency. And all of it come together. When it comes together, you'll know because it'll kind of stick to the thing like it is now. But yeah, all of it will stick. It'll be kind of like that. Add a little more flour. And stir. At this point, I'm getting what I need from the flour without putting it on heat, so I can add a little seasoning. As you see the paste, right. that's exactly what I'm looking for. I add my pepper to here. I add pepper to here. That's about um, two two teaspoons. This is a tablespoon of Tony's. Whatever love I give to this. I give to this. Give it that extra nice flavor. Yes. Whatever I do to one. You do to the other. I'm gonna do it to the other. I'm gonna come back to this. Whatever my whatever my flavor profile is, once I'm done seasoning, I always have a little left over so I can add to it. Okay. Filet doesn't have to be cooked. It's kind of like, it's the flavor, it's, it tops it off. So I give a little inside there, save a little because I don't know how much more I need. Right. Finish off my aru. See how it's pasty and sticking together? See the consistency I'm looking for? I see the consistency. That All looks right. really good. All right, I need, I don't need any more fire under the roux. So just mix the ingredients up. The pan is still kind of hot, so it's still cooking. I'm gonna put it in, but once I get it in, I'm gonna whisk it in. Um, also with the roux base, because I want to get all the lumps out of it. You know how you cook pancakes? You have a lump right. You don't, want you don't want that. Cause you're gonna taste it. All you're gonna taste is flour or whatever um, ingredients that is in the roux base. Right. And it's gonna be dry. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. That's the consistency. I have a roux. All right. Now at this point, I can put my. This is about a half a cup of roux base. Half a cup of roux base. Mm -hmm. I'm only gonna use half of it because it will give it an extra flavor. You don't want it too salty or anything. I'm gonna use about half. If I see that I need more flavor, I'll come back to it. Correct. Cooking basically, um, you go buy a recipe, but recipes change all the time. Um, some people like flavors one way, some like it another. So it's all about kind of you get the recipe just for base, basic. This is what I need inside of it. Right. And that's all it. That's all it is. Basically, this is what I need. This is how much I need to start with, and I can add or take away it all I want. Mine, yeah. Right. Seafood is still here because 
Seafood doesn't take long to cook at all. Shrimp may take two minutes. Crawfish tail might take a minute and a half. So I'll probably throw those in first, right behind them. These two might go in at the same time. Don't take long to cook. Alrighty. All right, we're going in. This is what's gonna give you a thickness. However thick you want your roux is how much of this you put in. So what made you want to take culinary at Bipsy? Um, I started a um, catering business. I was cooking so much, I, I began my own catering business. So in order to get certified in like seven patients to serve safe and actually go out and run a business legally and effectively, might as well come to Bipsy and learn more and get certified at the same time. You like the culinary art program here at Bipsy? I love the culinary art around here. The chefs are very knowledgeable about this area. Um, we go places, we do events, um, and everybody recognizes us for doing good jobs, great jobs. Um, they love our food. That's always good. And that's, and that's a direct reflection on our instructors because some things, you don't know everything. We learn something every day. Even the instructors learn something every day. Um, but they do teach you what you need to know in order to grow in this area. And they get you to a point where you can actually go out and do this. All right, once we're done with whiskey, I'm gonna put the Tabasco in, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste, I'm gonna do a taste test. To make sure everything that I want is seasoned. As far as seasoning, and everything else, make sure everything I want is what it's supposed to be. At this point, everything is cooking. So, I'm gonna add a little Tabasco. And with this gumbo, with this gumbo, I have undoing, which is kind of spicy. I have Tabasco, which is spicy. I have Tony's, which is spicy. I'm going to use it very good because it's not that good anyway. All right, now I'm going to check, see my salt balance, if I need anything, if I need to add water, if I need to um, add anything else right now, this will be the point in time. You can taste it with me if you want. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Really good. It's spicy, but it's really good. It's spicy. It's like a perfect spice. Um, so I really I don't need to spice it up anymore. But as you can tell, it's not really gumbo flavor yet. So right. I will add a little more fillet. So the fillet is what gives it the gumbo flavor, or is just everything else? Honestly, what's really gonna give it the gumbo flavor is when you put the seafood in. But the fillet is gonna give it that dark kind of flavor, you know, that you're looking for in the roof. And how the root turns kind of darkish brown sometimes. That's right. how, it depends on how much of that and how, how much you brown you, how much you brown your roux and how much filet you put in to give it that deep, deep flavor. This is, if I was home cooking this, I would add okra, I would add, I might add some chicken wings, it just depends, but it'll be mostly seafood. Right. Okay. But at this point here, the roux is basically just simmering. I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna get the water down to a temperature where I can put the seafood in. And once the seafood is in, it's gonna be done. Great, so how long will it take for the roux to sit and everything and to give the roux the... Uh... To let all the flavor soak in and everything? Right, the flavor. Um, once you let it simmer for about 30 minutes, you're there. Correct. But you can let it sit longer. You can sit, let it sit shorter. Once you put your um, seafood in, you're, you're killing the fire because you're gonna overcook it. So once you put that in, within five minutes, you're done. Right. So you can turn it off. Alrighty, so we're gonna let the roux simmer in the gumbo to give it the flavor. And while that is happening, we're gonna go ahead and send, send it to break.
Welcome back to Taste of Vipsy. During the break, he went ahead and added blue crab, correct? Yes. Into the pot, and now we're going to finish up with the seafood with what kind of shrimp is it? Just regular shrimp, gulf shrimp, whatever size. Um, that's a medium gulf shrimp, that's all it is. Ready, and what is this right here? That is crawfish top? tails. Just another seafood. You can add oysters, you can add anything you want to it, basically, at this point. At this point, your roux is done, and you can add whatever you want to this pot. But I have seafood in, so I'm gonna add that in and get it cooked, which should take on about two minutes at the most. All right, start with the shrimp. Just get it all in there. Ooh, that looks really good. And <laughs> the crawfish tails. Stir it up, and in about two minutes, my shrimp and my crawfish tail will be cooked, and it'll be ready to serve over rice. It's, it's good if you add, um, I don't know if you ever tried it or heard of it, potato salad. Oh, That's I have a sal side that. with gumbo. It's great. I learned that from a couple people who um, from down south. Um, Bay Tree in um, New Orleans area, Napoleonville and all that. They come down and they cook. And they show they showed me a lot of things and one of the things they showed me was put in potato salad with gumbo. Which made absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> but never heard of that. Yeah, we should try it. It's great. Go look at the color of our shrimp. See how they turn this reddish color? Oh yeah, I see. Okay, once they get about this color, they're done. And I didn't use a lot. I used like a half a bag of shrimp, so it's not gonna take long at all. So the more shrimp you add, the longer it'll take? The more or... shrimp you add, the probably the more water you have, which means the longer it's gonna take to cook the entire dish. Alrighty, I got it. Okay, yeah. So it's basically how much of something. All right, at this point, I would say, Done. The red color. In it. They're uh, done. They're done. Yes, ma'am. So now we are ready to taste. The taster. We got our old handed ladle. Our handle. Let me get this bowl. So we don't make a mess. So we don't. <laughs> we're gonna try not to make a mess. Try not to make a mess. It looks so good. Get as much juice as possible. Because this is actually where the flavor is. Where the flavor is. The rice is gonna be kind of blended. Right. Okay. Um. Now you grab your meats and whatever else you would like to eat. Sausage in there. Bring off a crab, put him on top, and we're in business. Seafood number one. Alright. Alright. So we taste? are now ready to taste. I'm gonna grab some shrimp. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab sausage. Hope it's <laughs> hot. It's really good. The shrimp really does bring out the flavor. It does have a little bit of kick, in my opinion. It has a little bit of kick after it, but as soon as you like bite into the shrimp, it's not, the spice, it kind of like savors like the spice. You can like taste it like with every other ingredient in it. It's really good, it's spicy, but it's really good. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. Well, that's all we have for today with Taste of Bipsy. I want to thank our chef for cooking with us today. We do appreciate. And tune in next time for a taste of Ipsy.